In a virtual social experiment, we took 100 of Minecraft's most capable players and gave them the ultimate survival test in a winter wonderland of starvation and death. Split evenly into three teams and given their own biome and special team hat, players would build up their civilizations throughout the four seasons and watch it all crumble beneath their feet as they questioned whether or not God loved them. With hardcore mode turned on, once a player died, they died permanently. And with a special surprise at the end, test subject, I, I mean players, would have to choose between morality or survival. In our second episode, I present to you desperation to ask this one question. How far will players go to survive? The 100 players were split evenly into teams of 33 and put on board three separate ships. The story we told them was that they had recently been banished and were heading to a mysterious island known to be cursed and piloted by an unknown captain. The ships each landed on their own island, complete with unique geography and climate. Players dropped off in the jungle were known as the Bushies. Their lands were far vaster than any other nations and were filled with plenty of natural resources. We designed the force of their biome to be dense and thick, to make expansion and exploration challenging. To add another dimension to the experiment, we gave each team a unique racial perk to help them thrive in their environment. For the Bushies, their tribal masks were enchanted with night vision, which we hoped would help them see threats like mobs or enemy players in the jungle. After entering the forest, the Bushies either went out on their own or grouped up with a few fellow tribesmen. A few Bushies started a farm, who would eventually form the first government. Even though there were no major threats, and they had the most landmass, the Bushies displayed their superior survival skills by failing to grow food. Uh, real quickly before we begin, uh, it's kind of unfair that the islanders got fishing rods because they can fish and we're starving to death. Nice Our time, crops aren't uh, even growing. Look. Guys, look what I got! No way! No way! You guys you guys have While the Bushies were focused on not starving to death in the first 15 minutes, the Nords scaled the Great Mountain and established their home. The Nords found a bee near their spawn, and began worshipping it. They followed it around until it stopped, where they began their first settlement. Guys, there's, there's a single bee at the top of the mountain. Guys, we have our first aid. Yo, let's make the a bee. beer king. We designed their lands to be rich with ore, but low on food. So their gift was an unbreakable obsidian pickaxe. Early on, the Nords were highly nomadic, mostly acting as lone wolves, or traveling in small groups. A few key Nords began searching for clues as to how the event would play out. I think, since the name is Desperation, I think we need to gather resources like, as much as possible. Why are the, the vines are purple over here? Oh. Or, the, or the pink? Oh, that probably has to do with the spring. Yes. Oh, like, in winter, there's like going to be like so much less stuff. They had a lot of conflicting ideas on how to run their nation, which resulted in internal conflict from the beginning and paved the road for future splintering. Jordan wanted to say something. We all need to gather resources to the defeat... Base? Yeah. I'm, okay, if we get attacked, I'm we're screwed. Lastly, in the southwest, the islanders found themselves on one of many small islands in the middle of the ocean. These players were adorned with an elegant headpiece that was worn with pride. While beautiful, the islands had a massive disadvantage as they had more water than land. To even the odds, we decided to give them two team gifts instead of one. The first gift was an unbreakable fishing rod to make up for less farmland. Then. We took half of the islanders and gave them a massive buff by doubling their swim speed, but gave the other half nothing. Spring, boys. It was spring, and the lush biome I was in yielded many resources. Wood, berries, stone, and so on. It wasn't long before I was in the mines. Since the islanders all had fishing rods, they didn't have to rely on farms, and instead comfortably explored their lands. 
This led to the Islanders' early empire stretching across their entire territory from west to east, with the most ambitious players moving east in search of more. Player Guy Who Kill Fenrir, who you may remember from our previous episode, discovered a totally random glass dome in the middle of the ocean, and instead of wondering why there was a man-made glass dome in the middle of the ocean, decided to build on it instead. A few players joined him, and together they created a homestead. Guys, I have I've located the dome. I can attest this is a good place to just start a base. We also have a cow. The start of spring had all three nations focused on self-sustainability. Food was more valuable than anything, and livestock was treated like gold, with astute players importing cows from across the territory. But once players were fed, civilizations focused on improving their competitive position by building bases and crafting armor and weapons. After two full days, we told each nation that it was time to choose a king or a queen to lead them into the future. Once elected, each monarch would receive a nation-specific crown, visually indicating the royal status and team allegiance. The islanders returned back to their spawn, planning to host speech is made by candidates for office. And just like in real elections, no one was happy and half the voters didn't show up. We're running out of grace period. We kind of... Oh. We're finally away. Player Jack the Doorknob made the first speech. Who, oh, those no, of you who don't know me, no. I'm Jack, oh, and we finally started to make some moves, but there is a long way, a long, long way we can go to make our nation great. I believe that every one of you is an essential asset to that. Okay. I promise you, you will all be treated equally. I will make us prosper. Wait, I'm confused. What's going on? A rival candidate for office, Chewy Mustard, refused to make a speech and instead challenged Jack the Doorknob to a duel, believing him to be a coward of a man. Well, I want Chewy exactly. Mustard to be our leader. Chewy Mustard! Yeah, I want Chewy mustard. Mustard. Chewy mustard! However, a tragedy echoed throughout the world that day. Oh, sh nope. Chewy Why is it day? Chewy Mustard died! Chewy Mustard's right. down! The, the mustard has fallen. Clean. Jack the Doorknob just went into the forest with Chewy Mustard for a talk? But then only Jack came out. Just want to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. Thus, being the only candidate to make a speech, Jack the Doorknob was crowned King of the Islanders and was given the ancient angler fish crown. I'm, I'm, oh, going, to, I'm going to crown Jack the Doorknob now, King of, oh, the, of, of the Islanders. Our ruler, King Whoa. Jack. Long may he reign. Soon after the coronation, I learned why half the voters didn't show up. The islanders that traveled east and settled the glass dome decided to peacefully secede from the west. They even had a few wandering bushies join their settlement. I, like, half of Team Islander has split and has become technically two nations with two different rule sets. Jack is technically the ruler of all the islanders. Jack has said that he will allow our leader, Snake, to continue to rule and do whatever he does as an equal leader. But overall, we have two different groups working together in harmony. When I visited the Bushies, I saw they created a public forum to discuss leadership, but they didn't end up using it as they were all minutes away from starving and just needed anyone. So, okay, everybody's elected grave here? Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, that looks sick, thank you. I look terrifying. <laughs> Does anyone have food, by the way? I have half a heart. Grave actually turned out to be a great leader, and he saved his people from famine by focusing on farming and diplomacy. I need food, I'm about to die. So does everyone. He established an alliance with the nearby Eastern Islanders, who gifted the Bushies one of their fishing rods as a sign of good faith and to help them with their food problem. You're gonna have to just sit there and fish. We are all starving. So I, uh, it's I'm going so to be dumb. an extremely important job, but you have to just sit there and do it. I'm sorry. Not Basically, gonna... we've set up an alliance, so we're now allies, and we tried to get trade and uh, couldn't really do it because we don't really have really anything we want. But as a gift, they gave us a fishing rod, which is vital to so kind just... of starving to death. By the way, Sam, uh, you might want to come back later. We're kind of setting something up for a sacrifice. It's not done yet, but just later. He then sent a delegate to the Nords, who were deciding their government. We have a council of three people who are getting plans put together, but our leadership is me, Meep, and Shospira. We're all equals. The Nords' choice in leadership was a coalition government with three leaders, Meep, Truspira, and Zaylong. Everyone just Okay, so, big thing that's gonna happen here is I need one people on, person on the tunnel crew, another person on resource gathering, so me for Spear, you guys fight this out, and I'm just gonna oversee the base building, because this is not secure, and if we get attacked, we have Straight no him, way please, to escape. Okay? Thank you. Because there was only one crown, Zaylon was crowned King of the Nords for his organizational efforts. There's someone with a green name, uh, outside the farm. What? Uh, well, what? Well, 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 farm. Get him so we can't leave. Uh, don't box him in, we're wasting resources. No, we're gonna have to fight them. Uh, hello? Hello. Hello. So, tell me what you offer us, then we'll tell you what we offer you. Silence. Do not Help. hit him, you idiot! Who did that? Me. Oh, okay. He's one of our leaders, so we can't exile him. If anyone else knows that we're exiling you. Okay, Charpo, what do you offer us? 
It doesn't even lighting him on fire! Yeah, I'm on fire. It's, it's mood lighting. Okay, so Charpa, are you gonna tell me anything? Stop Let's hitting see. him! Charpa, you might want to do something, they keep hitting you. Why is he even here? We want to, we want to ally with you. Oh, hell no. Oh. Yeah. Sherpa, uh, before we before we accept anything, we need to know why you want to ally with us and like what you offer us. Just the whole situation. Just explain yourself. You're gonna explain anything? He never explained anything. Fine. Here with the Let's enemy. Rewind. Someone come here. The or not the enemy. The, uh, the these are like not the enemy. Stop! I'm lighting him on fire. <laughs> Me. I'm still struggling to understand why you are an alliance. So I see two options here. We either create the alliance with you, or we kill you. No man threatens a messenger. After Bushy King Grave the Ghoul heard about his emissary being imprisoned, he warned Zaydalon to not harm him, or else he would face consequences. So, Zaydalon left the Bushy under guard by two players. But the guards disputed on prison policy, and Sharpa decided it was time to make the world's easiest prison break. Wait, uh... Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, okay. earlier. Uh, Obsidian. Come back! Do we kill him, or...? Bit. I see a lava pit. 660 negative ones are nice. Luckily for the Bushies, Sharpa was able to escape into the forest and return home. Given his undiplomatic policies of imprisoning messengers and faced with a tyrannical leader, three elders of the tribe decided to leave the clan and build their own society based off of social welfare. Oh yeah, you see that grassy peak down there? Let's go there. I have mushroom stew, by the way. I have two. Oh. Oh, no, man, I'm I'm a survival person. Are you just a little offshoot? Yeah, we're like a we're like a filler episode. I'm, I'm just disgruntled because I was apparently supposed to be part of the coalition leadership, and then apparently Zeta didn't like me, and then I just kept getting ignored in the group chat. So also I have emeralds, so I bribed these two. Everyone will have one once we get if we get eight people. We can have a maximum of eight people because that's how many emeralds we have. Would you like an emerald, Big Ham? Yeah, you could yeah, be sure. part of our oh, list. Get it. Woo! We'd love to see it. Yeah, Come check out the cafe low. if we don't die. I want to check out the cafe. Where's the cafe? <laughs> It, uh, it's well, not, it's not done. It's, it's not, not done. done yet. Okay. Also, <laughs> it turns out that it's all dark oak around here, so I think I'm gonna make the floor out of dark oak instead of spruce. After receiving an emerald from the cafe and joining their band of misfits, I realized I forgot to change the seasons. Oh. Hey guys. Okay. What about summer time? Summer? Oh shit! Nope. I forgot to change the season. Yeah. Oh, actually, it's yeah. Right on this. No, no, no. no, it's, it's, no, no. The start of summer marked a massive gain in the confidence of the players, but the warmth of the summer sun turned into an ominous warning of what was to come, and players took preparation and politics more seriously. No, summer, no, summer, 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 summer monsters like, have arrived. I would like to point out that there's seasons, so there may or may not be an issue regarding crops. May I, may I speak as head yes, first person? Orange. We, have, we have discussed this beforehand that we believe winter is Isn't coming. Okay, I mean, yeah. memes aside, as head resource person, I do, and I do firmly believe that the second that fall and winter come, our crops and our yields are going to be harder. We just need to collect food and get loads of food. With the first alliances and rivalries established, we introduced a new element into the experiment to test the player's diplomatic abilities, the item spawners. There was not only one, but three glass domes that we placed in between each team's territory in the ocean. Inside each dome, we activated an item spawner that dropped a set amount of its specific resource every two minutes. What we didn't tell the players was that we stripped the entire map of Diamond Ore before the event even began, making the diamond spawner the only source of diamonds in the world. This made diamonds an extremely rare commodity, and control of the spawner would mean control of the other teams. The first team to discover the diamond spawner was the Nords, and they made a move fast. The various glass domes around the world, they now have item spawners, yeah, stick around and you'll get their spawns. Wait, Robert, do you know where the glass dome is? I'm at it right now. What, what Wait, spawner is it? What spawner is it? It's a diamond spawner. No way! After being told that this was the only source of diamonds in the world, I immediately went out to help secure the dome. I see the glass dome, I see the glass dome. We need to fortify this as well. We need to make sure no one else can get diamonds here. Oh wait, what's this? What's this? Uh, ro ro Robert, what's oh, this? What the heck? What is this? Oh, Yo, they found the bunker. What is this? What is this? Oh, found something. There's a, there's a chest. There's a chest. I got a trident and a bell. Oh, they're taking the bell and the trident. Go into spectator. Go into spectator. Go into spectator. John. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Nope. What does this do? Okay, where's the table? It crashed my game. The Nords quickly took advantage of their position and built up walls around the spawner to maintain control and defense of the only source of diamonds in the world. Are we allowed to build a base here? You can do whatever you want. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. Around the same time, Bushy King Grave the Ghoul called out to the sky for his gods to seek an audience. It, it looks like Grave the Ghoul is about to do a sacrifice. Okay. Oh, hey, oh my god, god they, built, they built a death platter! Oh, oh my fucking shit. god. Oh my god. Gods, we have, have summoned you to make your a sacrifice. Call. 
In return for preferably an enchanted diamond, a tr enchanting table, we will sacrifice an illegal diamond sword, a command block, and 13 <laughs> emeralds. We don't know how we got these. In return, we would like this in return for an enchanting table, please. We beg of you. If that's just, not enough, alternatively, we can also just uh, no, no, sacrifice no. strikers. I will not give you an enchanting table, but I will give you four obsidian. Dang it! There is diamonds That's in- old. I will tell you that there are diamonds, but they're in the dome. You must find them there. In the dome! Oh, oh, thank you, God. We have dome. a new objective. After receiving divine information about the existence of the diamond spawner, the Bushy's new objective was finding it in hopes of creating an enchantment table. While Grave began sending out scouts to locate the spawner, the Eastern Islanders were enjoying their new source of leather. I got good news. We literally built our base on an item spawner on accident. King Jack the Doorknob lost a significant amount of political power when the leather spawner activated, as many islanders defected from the west to the eastern base. This gave the eastern leader, Snake Itis, more control than the king. With my newly acquired trident and bell, I traveled west to where our group had found an underwater dome. This is where we would hold out for the rest of the year. The lower dome would provide shelter, and the surrounding ocean would provide us all with food. Jack decided to make a royal visit to discuss the next steps for the team with Snake. Me and Jack will get things sorted. Hey, I've just I've just come to to talk about things. Oh, so, Jack, I got good news. We have a leather spawner. We are currently looking oh, for more uh, domes, so we're that's currently nice. generating leather. If you need it, just let me know. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll hit you up for that. Recognizing the opportunity to take more power, he absorbed the rest of the Western Islanders into his side. So much so that the Western base was completely abandoned, as everyone had moved to the glass dome. Even though he was the official king and accepted by both sides, Jack the Doorknob's influence was unmatched against the tight political grip Snake had on the now more populated Eastern Islanders. We do have our own set of rules. We will always be a part of Islanders, but we do do things our own way. We're, this is where we're gonna stay because we're moving from the other base. Soon after visiting, Jack the Doorknob was forced to abdicate his throne and power to Snake Itis, and although he kept the crown, Snake Itis was now the new chancellor of the Islanders and the sole source of power. So I'm fine with alliance with Bushies. Fair warning, who knows what the nope. f the end of this event is gonna bring to us. Can I bring up an issue? Yes. yes. Whoever's building these random uh, Among Us memes, yeah. please stop. stop. To keep voice chat under control, Snake Itis enforced something called the talking stick, in which only one player was allowed to speak at a time. Talking stick? Who wants it? Yes, I'm giving it away. Uh, Say your name. I mean, Say your name. Really Here's how we'll go. We'll go. No, no. Relay. Bino. I never. Yeah. Bino. We're gonna We're give the talking stick. Go first, Cap. Then Bino. Then Relay. Okay. So Cap, go first. While effective, Snake Itis's regimented style of ruling was unpopular, which caused a few of the islanders to go out on their own out of boredom. Feeling shackled by our new bureaucratic leaders, I stepped out of line and went for a swim down the coast. Time to cause some trouble. With the current Bushy Islander alliance remaining strong, it looked like the Nords would be in an uphill battle to keep control of the Diamond Spawner. King Grave's scouts had come back and successfully located the dome, and angered by the Nords' imprisonment of his emissary earlier in the event, Grave the Ghoul began preparing an assault on the Diamond Spawner. Guys, I found a dome. Okay, Send as many people, okay, so, oh, I want three people to go there. No. We need those diamonds. Wait, we no. also need uh, books though. We need sugar cane. Back at the dome, the top five Nord warriors were defending a now fortified Diamond Spawner, with one especially talented pair of real-life friends, Robert Kuh and Senior Aussie. Senior Aussie had already gained a reputation as an unstoppable fighter. The Bushies would have to play dirty if they wanted a chance at obtaining some diamonds for the enchantment table. Dude, the Nords have a lock on the diamonds. That's kind of what I predicted, but they're all here. It's not even there's autumn a, yet. Yeah, there's a green here. Wait, what, what? There's two greens here, outside the diamond gem. We're oh, allies with the green, right? No. I, I don't know. Okay, then, let's kill them. Oh, they're gonna Wait. jump in on us. Hey, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're surrounded. Right now. Wait, we're surrounded. We're surrounded. The Bushy's intimidating arrival paralyzed the Nords in self-doubt, causing them to play it safe. But at the same time, the Bushy soon realized that they were severely outnumbered, which made them afraid. This led to a very tense standoff, as no players wanted to risk their lives making the first strike. Robert Kuh went on the offensive and asked his friend to join him. Austin, come here. Get over to me. On the other side of the dome with you. Come this way. Come this way. We fight together. Let's go. Let's kill these guys. <laughs> the battle remained almost entirely cold, with no losses on either side, until the players received a reminder that they didn't have time to sit around. Oh. Oh, 
this is not gonna end. Oh, time god. Rapidly. oh god. We need Resources. to do food for the crop. Because I was late changing seasons the first time, the sudden onset of autumn was an unexpected shock to the players. To make sure the world was still believable, we explained the irregular season lengths as one of the many curses of the island. Luckily, everyone believed it. You just got pranked! Someone needs to uh, stock up on food, like, immediately, because uh, when winter comes, uh, it's drink, not going to spawn. Instead of engaging in more combat, both the Nord defenders and the bushy attack squad began focusing on obtaining food out of fear, with the bushy stopping mid-invasion to fish. Winter was now on their doorstep, and most players correctly assumed that food would be scarce. The biomes are changing. Wait, wait, wait. Guys, everyone, the water is changing. I'm a survival person. <laughs> At this point, only 26 players had died, leaving 74 remaining. Similarly to our previous episode, Doom, players were scared of not being there for their team when the twist occurred, so they played risk aversively. But with the start of fall, resources were now at risk. If you wanted to survive, you would have to be more aggressive. Guys, they want a few diamonds and then they'll leave us alone, they say. They don't get anything. We have numbers here on them. We should not give them our diamonds. We can't risk a war. There is no cooperating with these guys. <laughs> While the Nords began negotiating with King Grave, the invading Bushy snuck back into the dome without permission, looking to catch the Nords off guard. Among them, former captive Sharpa, who drew first blood. Robert, come here. Robert, come here. What? Make yourself some boots. So, no, 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 no. Don't make boots. Don't make boots. We can make two swords. Mmm, I kind of like axes. We could just save for an axe. The green is back. There's one green we need a book in sugarcane. I've been saying that forever, but we can't get it. I'm getting hit, help me. I'm dead. Yeah. What? No! Okay, so engage, 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 kill them. Whoa, so, no. get, get, the, get the one in the boat, get the one in the boat. They retreated and they came back again and then they killed two of our members, we killed one of theirs. Okay. And now they're claiming the diamond gem for their own. They're trying to leave, they're trying to leave. Below, 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 in the water. I got nice. it. Chopper, nice, oh, yes. After failing to negotiate, the invading Bushies went against their king's wishes to continue diplomacy and hit the Nords hard and fast. They stole four diamonds from Robert Kuh's corpse, and after temporarily gaining control of the diamond spawner, left with two casualties. Even though he got revenge and killed his best friend's killer, the death of Robert Kuh made Senior Aussie a loose cannon with nothing to lose. No, they're, uh, they're gone. They're gone. They got away with the diamonds. While upset with how they were obtained, King Grave nonetheless accepted the diamonds and called upon the gods for another sacrifice. The gods are coming. The gods are coming. The gods are here. Help. Help. Yeah, that's down. I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. Hello. So we have the diamonds. We have the obsidian. We just need sugar cane. What will it take for sugar cane? Please. This is all we need. Come forward. <laughs> Declare your allegiance to me. Uh, sure. I mean, it kind of already was. I mean, I used to have a Pope. Do it for I, I the mean, video. I Shut literally... up. Just, just say something. Do it for the video. Uh, use big words. Use big words. God yes. of the Among storm, the sea, Among and the yes. sky, yes. I yes. pledge allegiance not just to you, but to the entire council yes. of the divine beings. Yes. Yeah, we got it. After accepting Grave's mediocre oath of fealty, the cafe trio asked me to come visit them again. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I went down to mine for iron and I got lonely. So I'm gonna come back up, see what my teammate needs help with. Uh, what happened? Wasn't there another guy? Uh, yeah, he died. Yeah. He got blown up by a paper. No. Oh, oh Sam, you gotta check out your cafe. Oh, we dedicated the cafe to you. Oh, thanks, guys. For you and Fucking Isla, guy. we have Isla's helmet over here framed. Forever yeah, memory of him. I gotta, I gotta give you something. Oh, wait, can it, can it be glow squid? Glow squid ink. You can find that. You, you <laughs> can't find this. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, ooh. Oh, you could sit in it. Oh, that is so much better than Glow Squid. Oh, thank you. Check it out. The cafe was flourishing in a utopia frozen in time. Unfortunately, the rest of the world was in a far worse place. After the war, the Nords struggled to reestablish themselves on the global stage as they were left scattered and undersupplied. The Just Mira. Uh, Sata, Sata. We're, this is our last stance. We're really low on players, and if they attack us we might, uh, without help, we might die. Though barely surviving, the Islanders saw the Nords as a looming threat. They feared that over time, the Nords would be fully suited in diamond gear and become unstoppable. The Nords have the diamond gem, and if you if we wait any longer, they're going to be too powerful. It could be argued that the Nords have some substantial powers over us, even though they just got that diamond gem. During the Diamond War, Snake Eyed stayed neutral, despite both sides calling to him for aid. But after the dust settled, he agreed to work with the Nords by sending desperately needed food to them in exchange for diamonds. He also sent a delegate to the Bushies' base, as the Bushies were threatening to end their alliance due to Snake trading with their enemy. I'm, I'm here to say hello. I'm friends with this kind man. Let's get a screenshot, man. Let's get a screenshot. At this point in the experiment, 
the team's political relationships were more intertwined and fragile than they had been ever before. Bush, us as Islanders were trying to not be on anyone's bad side. By declaring war on the Nords, you're making us choose a side. Each team seemed to be focused on the wrong objective, and they had forgotten just how close winter really was. At the worst possible time, this happened to the Nords. No, it's winter. Winter. winter! Oh no, uh, guys, you feel a cold bit of chill in the air, something's wrong. Something's okay, happening, yeah. something's happening. I'm scared. Jesus Christ. Winter stop. is here! Unlike the other seasons, we made winter much more difficult to survive in by making a few changes to the world. The first change was making it almost impossible to obtain new food. Crops no longer grew without bone meal, and unfortunately for the islanders, fishing no longer worked. Every 20 seconds, each player was afflicted with the hunger effect, making the need for food even more paramount. If not near a source of heat like a campfire or a torch during a snowstorm, players and tamed animals alike would freeze to death, and if you tried swimming, you would risk hypothermia. With all of these new challenges, would civilization be able to survive, or would it all crumble? Somebody oh, make a, a, what's it called, a campfire. Crops, they appear to still be growing, although they seem to be a bit lessened. Resource gatherers, I had you guys gather logs. Go grab your logs, start making campfires, and start building campfire huts in the bottom of the base. I still need people to stand guard on the edges. I'd like campfires on the edges of all of the walls. And... Oh, God. All right. Yeah. I'm going to stay out here. Sounds good. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I'm probably just going to have to wait out winter yeah. before we can do it. Wait. Everyone's going to have to. Oh, no, you're shivering. Yeah, I know. Wait, when does it, crops will no longer oh. grow, fishing no longer works, farm animals no longer breed, and one more, one more surprise. The real name of this event is not desperation, it's, it's cold. cold snap. Oh. What? Wait, winter's here, crops will no longer grow, fishing no longer works, farm animals will no longer breed, and one more surprise. The real name of this event is not, it's cold snap. Nope. Builders, if you can, I need you to be outside, and I need you to build a roof over this base's head. All food, bring the food underground. Orange, I need you to come back to base. You'll be in charge of rationing. If people want food, go to Orange. Survivors began testing their new environment to see if they could make any discoveries that would help them. Oh, okay. That's good news. Bone meal works on uh, sweet berries. Keep that in mind, everyone. Get in a boat to prevent the hunger. Two leaders can debate this, but personally, my orders are that we should just stay here. Currently, we're just trying to survive this out. We have the campfires so keeping us from freezing, and we're just trying to survive the hunger. Wait, guys, start making leather uh, armor. We have leather. I'm making a leather chest plate. It definitely does something. I'm okay. wearing leather right now, and I'm literally walking uh, around everywhere. Oh. Confronted with a common threat, players stopped seeing other nations as rivals, and more so as fellow survivors. Politics became nearly irrelevant, which began a new era of unprecedented global cooperation, not against any specific team, but against the cold. Everyone just wanted to make it out of this alive. We're basically good on everything but freaking food, so we're hoping to make an alliance with the Nords and the Nords of the Islanders. The Islanders are Excuse fine me. with us, but the Nords aren't, so we need to make peace with the Nords. If we're lucky, we can actually get everyone to work together, and then we'd be fine. We're thinking of inviting them to our base. I'm a diplomat for the Islanders. I'm here to talk. Oh, Hello. How are you guys doing in this uh, winter so far? Freaking terrible. We just need freaking food. I could probably arrange that with my team to see if we can supply you with food but that's a that's a big if and maybe if you'd like you can also come and stay at our base because our base is pretty freaking big we are also willing to move to you we just need food we have an enchanting table okay okay good Where? to know okay, the so i got about a bit of information from the bushies told me that they are in desperate need for food at the moment the thing is they they're interested they they're interested in trading they're willing to give something for food so, we have enough food to spare we so, don't have enough rations already uh, they might want to live here with us really quick here's going to be the rule on refugees they have to help they aren't guaranteed anything we are struggling as it is. You so, only need two pieces of leather armor. All right, so that's that's good to know. So just only make chest bead and pants. That's it. Snakeitis agreed to aid the bushies and sent out a rescue delivery to deliver emergency supplies. I was offered the opportunity to deliver vital resources to our allies, and despite my lack of food, I accepted and I began my swim. I cannot turn around now. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm going to starve. I am on two hunger bars. I need some food the moment I get there. Can we arrange that? Oh my god, dude, this is not good. This isn't good. This isn't good. Oh, you're right there. Oh, yeah. Two more people than Nords right now. I no, no, I got food. Dying. I think this is it. Goodbye, ahead. everybody. No! no! I think we have any other choice. We just... We don't have... We don't have any sorts of oh, food. Oh, you keep on going out! 
Stop going out. Yeah, I died. The baby. We need food. We're starving to death. We're dying rapidly. We lost three people in the last three minutes. But nobody is listening to me. As civilizations were teetering on the edge of collapse, the second stage of the experiment began. A twist that would force players to make a fateful choice. Upon their deaths, players would drop six to ten pieces of pork chops, a tantalizing morsel that appeared to offer a chance at survival. But little did they know that this meat was not from the pigs that roamed the island because we turned off their spawning before the event even began. As those hardy survivors who dared to partake soon discovered, the meat was actually human flesh, bearing the name of the late player it once belonged to. Would players have the stomach to eat their own kind, or would the moral weight of their actions prove too much to bear? Uh, hey guys, uh, quick, quick thing, guys, quick thing. Pork chops are human meat. I have chunks of I have chunks of Mr. Mon Monopoly Man in my hand. Oh, delicious! We <laughs> this delicious. This is no not good. Hey, come here, come here. Steve. Where where are you? Take look at this. What's up? And you'll understand. Just pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Oh God! We have to talk in private. So we're able to eat each other. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I don't yeah. laugh. We can just tell people we're getting pork. If somebody dies, we need somebody to go there immediately. Correct. Then. So let's head back. We'll keep the secret, just us. Uh, we'll head back now, okay? Sorry about that, everyone. We had to talk in private a little bit. The remaining Nords were still at the diamond spawner, camping out in their makeshift hut. Because they remained in the same place, they didn't really know about human meat, and wouldn't make the discovery until much later. Oh, no, uh, no not the hunger effect again. This is killing us. Everyone joy bell. If we, if we find a single cow, that could, like, save our lives. What's that going to do? One steak um, isn't going to be milk. enough to Milk! <laughs> Milk. 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 Anyone, anyone milk does? Mega. We're barely surviving as it is. I can find a cow. Okay, yeah, there they go. All cows are dead. Bruh. After failing to find a cow, Nord Truspira began an expedition to travel to the cafe and bring back food for the few starving Nords left. Export probably is most of the Nords. What do you mean? Well, if you think about how many Nords are here, Big Mac Sporter is the other, other lot. Dude, there's not many of us left. The trees are turning wintry too. This storm seems oh. to be passing. It'll be seem to walk around without heat. And yes. Dry. Oh. Meep, you scared me so badly. Meep. Uh, <laughs> you scared me so badly. <laughs> so where are we going? I'm. I need food. I actually really need food. I'm all out. Of, I've got three bars of hunger. I thought you couldn't lose hunger in in boats. What happened? No, that? no, not if you have the hunger effect. Uh, we're just trying to find food. Oh, uh -oh. me help! Maybe I should have just asked one of you for food. Nice. Go me lit. Wait, protect me, protect me. No! While nearly all of the survivors were discovering the horrors of the island's curses, you might be wondering what the cafe was up to. We want to go win, but. It's night time. Oh, <clears throat> oh, wait, Toast, come up come up here. Look at the grass. Yeah, yeah dude, isn't, gotta this, isn't this cafe so cool? Hi, Sam. We've lit it up oh. with some campfires. You guys are actually doing really well right now. There is a, there's <laughs> definitely yeah. a benefit to being two whole people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys so. know that, um, that, that the bushies are already starving. Um, oh. oh, fantastic. Yeah, it sounds like we need to be at our cafe. <laughs> it's it's warm, we have some food. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go I, brave I, the I, elements for a flower. I'll bring it back. Do we have any clay? We might be able to make like a flower pot or something. Being one of the only groups that properly stocked up on food before winter, the cafe was coasting. They became so confident in themselves that they started broadcasting the cafe's coordinates in global chat, offering salvation to those willing to travel to them. Meanwhile, Snake was trying to keep human meat a secret. He didn't believe that human meat was harmless and acted with caution. What's up? Am I allowed to be here? Is no, Orca, head back. No, no, right. no, Orca might need to hear this. Do you know what the legend of, uh, uh what's it called? Yagwai, uh, Wendigo or something? Oh. Wendigo. This meat, we're gonna turn into Wendigos. So, really quick, I will test. Orange, if I die, really quick. No, do not risk it. We have to let them know, because otherwise they're gonna find out and start eating. Let them know, but I mean, we do not test it on you. Here's the thing, Orange. Who are we going to test it on? I have to do it like this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If that's if you read it raw, if you turn it back into the pork chops, it undoes it. Wait, sh Nope. That's right. That might be the look around. As Ooh. long as we can cook it on the fireplaces, we'll be safe. Here's what we'll find out. Yep, okay, I'm good. I'll make the announcement. So, everyone, I have an announcement. Yeah. We can eat each other. Now, we aren't going to. This is a last resort. How many of you guys are familiar with the legend of a Wendigo? The idea is that people get so cold, they eat another human being and it turns them into a monster. His head. Uh-oh. 
You start to feel sick, um... We are getting reports that this might be what's happening. Do not eat the raw meat. We don't know if it's safe. I ate my grandma. No, I should uh, not have ate my grandma. Why are you oh, guys shaking? Because he's starving. Why isn't he warm? Wait, admins, admins. This guy's freezing even though he's next to fire. No one else is- I Oh no! This. We ate people! No! We have conducted a test on the cooked meat to see if it'll turn somebody, but we do not know. I've speed and regeneration. No, I've been eating people for is. years. I know what this is. This is a brain virus thing. Only what cannibals get. It's Kuru. Kuru. There we go. Yeah. The second to last curse of the island was an incurable disease. The disease could be contracted in two ways. To the consumption of cooked or uncooked human meat or by touching an infected player. Once infected, the player would begin receiving messages hinting to them that something wasn't right until the transformation was complete. Just like in real life, players would have to discover on their own how the disease worked and spread by trial and error. I have extremely important information. I know how we turn into zombies. It's raw meat, right. isn't it? Not exactly raw meat. If you pick up raw meat from a dead zombie already, like somebody that's already turned, you'll turn. Uh, here's the thing. So, I already did that, and I have oh, yet to turn. Also, if you starve to death, you will turn into a zombie. We've already found that out. To complicate things for the Islanders, Nord Senior Aussie, who lost his friend Robert Cut during the Diamond Spawner War, began taking revenge on the Islanders for not aiding their side during the conflict. Did we kill the Nord? Senior no, they Aussie? escaped. They escaped. All right, so yeah, Senior Aussie is kill on sight. Got it. There is a workaround to the human meat. If you cook it, it no longer has the effect. No, we, we covered that. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so, so really quick, I need a quarantine on me immediately because I may or may not have yeah, eaten. You, you uh, may or may not have tested it on our leader. Did we test it on our leader? I want a block quarantine around me so that way if I do turn, you can kind of use me for testing to see if there's... I'm turning, I'm turning. Hurry, turning. Build, the bar build the barricade, hurry. Build the barricade around oh, dude, I'm going to turn. Good luck, gamers. Okay. I, have a, I have a little hole. I have a little hole. Uh, come come say hi come say your final goodbyes to me. Can, can I say my final goodbyes? Honestly, it's been a pleasure. We've been at this for Lord knows how long. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you. I'm proud. Let the, to so let, let the talking stick live on in my name. We vow to... to to live on your honor. Thank you. My final yeah, sacrifice I'm was good. making sure that no one else suffered the okay, fate I did. Snake has led us till the end. Okay. He was a true Ever. friend. If there happens to be a cure for this, and we find it first, please cure me. Are we gonna tell the Bushies or the Nords at all? Tell them both. In the end, okay. we're just trying to survive together. We aren't trying to be apart. Okay, guys, I'm turning. Stand back. Goodbye, gamers. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, in real life just kills you. I don't want to give you superpowers. No, 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 well, no, it's not superpowers. It, 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 it makes you shake all the time. You kind of go insane. Uh, I just got a message saying that I'm getting less and less sane. Wait, wait, no, no, you, got, out, you guys get outside. You guys oh, get God, outside. Get out. Get, Why? get quarantine them. Quarantine them. Who cares? They are our friends, okay? They're friends that will hilarious. eat your nope. balls, dude. The head's kind of fire, I'm not gonna lie. Hey, I wanna see it, I wanna see it. Ooh, that's a pretty nope. fire. I like that Pokemon. <laughs> I didn't die! No! I, didn't no. I, just, I didn't want to turn, power. I had plenty of food. Yeah, this is oh, fun. Honestly, yeah, other have... than the hats, this doesn't seem to do anything. We so got infinite sure. resistance, that's good at least. So, oh. update. I may have already turned. Oh. Update. I do have a craving for human flesh. Oh, if he does something, we can just feed them to our leader. I mean, we've yeah. kind of- Yeah! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Give me meat. Oh, if you wow. can find human meat, I can still help. Give me human meat. I'm oh, hungry. Human meat. I've got human meat. I've got human meat. We have no- Send it in. Send it in. What I'm hungry. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, so he's oh. like- Oh, no. 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 I'm not going to feed him ape. All right. Give me food. Oh, I'm hungry. God. Oh no. She'd, she'd be okay with it, I think. Excuse me, I, I need to say this. I think I'm turning. All right, get uh, relay. Oh, relay, no! I'm quarantining relay. myself. Relay, I'm quarantining relay. myself. I, I ate lamb chops, but I don't know where I, I don't even know where I got them from. Human meat I, no, relay, but I got them from a chest meat. way long ago. Oh, no. In order to learn more about the disease, the Bushies and Islanders began communicating and comparing notes in an international research effort determined to prevent further outbreaks. They both came up with a different name to call infected players. The Islanders called them Wendigos, while the Bushies called them Ghouls. Everyone fly, please. Yes, who was there? I'm a, I'm the, I'm the 
Islanders. Avalorc team has become undead. We, we had reports of that over here at the Islanders. Do you know how they turned? Oh, Just cooked pork I chops never, as far as no, we know. No, no, it's, no, it's from humans specifically. After True Spear's death and Senior Aussie's disappearance, only King Zaydalon and Nord General Orion remained, with General Orion staying by his king's side to ensure his safety as his personal knight. This is the last of my food. I'm going to nice. try and... Do you have any food, General? No, I'm all out. What's your hunger like? Three bars, but it's more important you stay alive. If you say so, I feel oh, bad. A... They decided to make the journey to the cafe as they were close to starving, and to reunite with the rest of the Nords. All of the Nords are trying to meet at the FTL cafe. <laughs> hey guys, I see you, uh, you have an intimate moment in this boat. Oh, uh, you like it? Yeah, I'll see. Uh, I don't even know who he is, really. I just see that he keeps going around killing people, so no, we are not allied with him. Okay, because he's also... in BC right now. Yes, yeah, Ozzy, can you please speak Hello. up and explain what's going on? I've been neglected for too long. You Based. were neglected for too long? What do you mean? As the experiment continued, uninfected players started becoming a rarity. Almost all of the bushies had become infected. They turned to religion as a hope to cure them. Is there a way to fix this, gods? Fix what? I mean, it does... The crown protects you from the effects of the disease. No, that's why I'm fine. Mr. Can we sacrifice some stuff to undo this? Oh, can we sacrifice some human again. Oh, no, no, you're on your own. Hey. Guys, Wait, I don't think we're getting hungry anymore. I think we can just leave now. The Bushies accepted their new way of life. They refused to cannibalize any living players to maintain their morality. The Islanders were trying to keep Snake Itis alive. But they were running out of options. I'm pretty sure this is tainted meat too. So here, here. You're dropping down the hole. Hey, uh, hey so, Jack, could you come over here real fast, Jack? I'm not gonna lie to you right now, man. That shoulder blade of yours. Oh, there's a Nord looking at us. Let me get a look at those ankles. I love how we're just like a zoo gallery now. Like, <laughs> I swear if they don't find a cure, a high chance that they'll have to execute us. But honestly, I mean, I'm having a blast. If they try to execute us, I'll fight back. But. Yeah, and we have resistance one, okay. So if you punch me right now, I would turn, right? I have no clue. Would you like to test? I'm kind of hungry. No, 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 no. You know that little bicep right there looking kind of tasty, okay. I'll be honest. Look, I know that I am a thicky, okay? You can look at the derriere right there. Still. You know, that's some cake right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Nord King Zedalon and General almost starved in their boat, but luckily were saved by Big Max Porter, the head of the cafe. Welcome to the cafe. What the? Oh. Feel free to pop a seat. Uh do you guys have seats? All right, would you like some cookies? Here, I will even pay you. I will pay. Here, have more. You saved our life. It was terrible out there, man. You got to make... <laughs> I'll help you guys yeah, get wood. Yeah, we just spent weird, the entire night in a two-by-two two hole with torches next to us, so Oops. we didn't freeze. This is a hundred times better than what we just had. I want to make a safe way. Um, people made sacrifices for us to get here. We started with like ten people, and we're down to two. I don't even know how we made it this far. But where is everyone else? <laughs> they, they died. Uh, no they Jesus. died one by one, and it was really sad. All three of our leaders were there, and I'm the only one that's left. Uh, then While Snake was quarantined, Senior Aussie was continually picking off Islanders and became nothing short of a legend. The Islanders' numbers were dwindling. De facto leader Orange Soul came up with a risky solution to the problem. Crazy idea. Got something that you could eat. There, that guy that was murdering everybody, the guy who murdered Apricot, he's still out there and he just attacked me. We could send you guys out there to go hunt him. <gasps> I'm down. Guys, what is your plan of releasing the Wendigos? The guy who murdered our friend Apricot, yeah. we're gonna uh, send the Wendigos yes. after him to murder him because they're hungry. Oh. We're gonna we're gonna weaponize our people. Okay? Where is like, he? He was like last seen here. I'm going to survey you guys and just like write down some notes in my head. As long as we have meat, like we don't have to uh, eat uh, you guys. Uh oh, uh oh. Guys, what? what's happening? What's happening? What is it? I'm starting to feel sick. Oh, no, you guys started to turn. I got nausea. Okay. Looks like I'm joining my friends. Yeah. Oh. Senior Aussie's here. Senior Aussie's here. Senior Aussie's in the base. I was just killed. All right, Eight brothers. Let's let him. Let's let him. Let's let him. <laughs> Send in the Wendigos, baby. <laughs> After Snake and Relay were led out to defeat Senior Aussie, the disease spread to the entire Eastern Islander base. Even though they started the event as peacemaking fishermen, Winter had broken their spirit. Can't be, maybe we can't be like in six feet of each other. It's, if that's the thing, then everyone in the base is right. I'm turning. Oh, I'm turning. Me. Yeah, that's it. I'll, uh, I guess I'm leading again. All right, so update what? everyone. Uh, it's your boy Snake, hi Cap. Found out that the Wendigo virus is airborne. Everyone is infected. Everyone? Everyone? Everyone on the island base is infected if you came within like six feet of me. Why did you let them out? Why I have weakness right now. 
I have weakness as well. You're gonna have weakness for a bit. Uh, give it a bit. All gather. There is a nice uh, Nord Cafe with uh, some succulent so meat there. Nice. Oh. Okay. Well, they think I'm still good with them. I can tell them, hey, we're gonna, hey, we, you know, Islanders decide, you know, alliance. We're gonna come into the cafe and hang out. We go there. Okay. They're not well, suspecting. We murder all of them. I, I would. Ooh, Islander hasn't turned. Uh, we might need your resources if you catch my dream. All right. I'm hungry. I'm oh no. Could we eat someone? Wait. Hey, underdog. Yeah. No. Uh, you may. All in favor, say aye. No, 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 no. All right, everyone, go for him. Get him. Get him. Get his ass. No, no. Get his ass for human meat. Go, 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 go. This ain't good. I don't like this idea. I don't like the idea. Can we can find another way? Come on. No, I I think this is kind of how this is gonna go. If you turn before we get to you, then we'll just turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Oh, oh, he turned. He turned. Okay, okay. Everyone, head back to base. I don't trust any of you anymore. No, you're our friend. Guys, um, they've posted the cards to the cafe. And if we want to head out now, I told them that it's a small group of islanders that left because of the Wendigo spreading. Yeah, All right. We should just go. So everyone, let's go. Jack, I'm are you turned yet? I'm just staying silent, pretending. Wait, okay, really quick, Jack. Are you turned yet, buddy? Wait a second. Jack, Jack hey, buddy. Out, there's, get out there's, of the way. Nord, there's a Nord. There's a Nord. Kill him. Murder him. Shoot. There's a Nord. Go after him. Un get his ass. Go, go, go. Where is he? He went underwater. He went this way. <laughs> I can smell him. <laughs> Jack was just saved by the random Nord. <laughs> yep. I, I can just follow. I can just follow. Go, go, go. I right? The Islanders gave up trying to be the good guys and set a course for the cafe. This was in stark contrast to the Bushies, who also became a roaming pack of cannibals just like the Islanders, but hadn't given up their morals yet. They started on a journey to seek refuge promised by Snake Itis, but they didn't know he had turned evil, and he gave them the wrong coordinates, hoping they would die on their way to nowhere. We're, going to war. we're moving to the fish base because we've become friends. We're now a wandering tribe that lives off the wait, land I, as we travel. Wait, wait, creeper, wait, uh, creeper, 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 creeper. I have a half a heart, a half a heart and a half. Let's There's just stop here for the night. Everyone, get inside the house. We're making a makeshift base. Get inside, get inside the freaking mound. We'll survive. We can do this. Have While the Bushies were huddling for warmth, little did they know that they would be the first victims of the third and final curse of the island. Yetis were nearly invincible, but did no damage. They were designed to scare players, and were attracted to lightning. While we're hunkered down, I can read you guys with my history book. It's actually a true story. It's a history of a time before time, before the event ever even began. I call it the unwritten tome of voices. In the beginning, there was only one nation, the gaming channel. We do a little trolling. It's called We Do a Little Trolling. Cheddar, as the king of what the frick is happening. Oh, Say these woods are cursed. Are you kidding me? A uh, hi, just, yes, just the yeti. Not. One of the admins is now a yeti. Okay. Don't get its attention. Just leave. Just leave. Just get to the trees and we run. You can see the a new region. I think it's the Nords one because it's all snowy. Let's move, come on. Isn't everything snowy? <laughs> the Bushies abandoned their makeshift base in the middle of the night, but most of the players were in a critical condition and were not healthy enough to survive the journey. Many would perish in the woods. There's Someone gone. fell! Glock okay, Raptor's gone! We need to find their bodies so we can eat them. It's oh, that's here. so dark, but it's so true. Where's their body? Someone find their body. This is awful. We have to eat our own kin. Why the hell is there a Yeti, bro? Just I'm avoid the Yetis, now. keep running. If we get out of the woods, they'll probably stop. Get to the pine, get to the pine trees. Get to the pine trees. Okay. These, those woods aren't cursed. Huh. Never mind, they still are. They're still falling. Just run! Just run! Just run. Kill yeah, them. Probably have, they probably have like 20 health. Be careful. Alright, I don't think we can kill them. Just start running. How Just keep. We're we running, yetis are freaking chasing us. Just keep moving, okay, well, just keep running. Run. I'm out. Senior Aussie's here. No, we can't abandon them. <gasps> run, guys, run, run yeti, know. freaking yeah. run. No, late clover. Guys, just keep it's running. We need to get more than a negative 200, positive 800. Just keep going. We're almost there. We I feel like this is that more one Lord of the Rings thing. We're just getting called out. Where are we meant to go? You said you would help us, and now you're saying nothing. Did he just leave? Oh, I, uh, I think I found the cabin up, up top. It's a little suspicious that you guys have skull heads. Why are you- Yeah, it's probably not us. It's not us, and if it is, it's a fashion statement. I've, I've what do you mean it's not you guys? Oh. Before the Islanders could group up, Nora Turncoat Highfield chased cafe leader Big Max Porter into the woods. He's trying to give us information. Oh. Or no. I'm uh, currently being attacked. This is not good. This is not good. <laughs> What's your username? I'm Big Max Porter. He's, he's at the cafe. Mother Wait, why do his Max just kill Which one of you f nope. murdered me? Hi, Phil! Uh, well, I guess we're starting. Yep, somebody already died. 
Let's eat, boys! No, 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 no. You guys are ungrateful fucking nope. bastards. I let you in, I give you food, I give you housing and heat, and you murder me. Now you're gonna no. give us more food if I die. I'm gonna make like oh, Subway and eat inside. fresh. Jesus mm, Christ. I already got some food, boys. Oh, wow, they had, cha mm, they had chairs. Dude, these chairs, good. anybody wanna sit down and have a little meal? Here's some oh. meat. Oh, oh, there's a Yeti. There's like four the Yetis. Holy shit. Oh. Okay. oh, no, more Yetis. Oh, get out, get out, get out. Run! 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 Uh, it's the physical form. Spread, spread out, spread out. I'm, I'm sorry. Not. Great, now there's a blizzard too. Oh wait! It's past dead people! Look at their names! Oh no. Oh no, they're gonna take revenge on us. If, it, if it's dead people, I think I'd be getting harder targeted. Uh, so I think I think the raid went pretty good. We got some yeah, decent meat. Yeah, we lost meat. a couple of them. Where did they go? I don't know. You want to know how I prepare my human flesh? First, I get it fresh from the source. Oh my gosh. Everybody tells you to go store-bought. No, nah, you got to do it yourself. Get it. Get your own hands on what you're eating. You got to let it marinate a little bit. You don't have a lot of time because, you know, you're starving. But I grabbed some lemons, a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper, because I, let's face it, I'm, I'm in love with the classics. <laughs> then I let it marinate for about three or four oh, seconds. Before I shove the entire thing down my face. I eat it raw. It's, it's better raw. After eliminating Big Mac's porter and seizing the cafe, the islanders reminded the survivors that it was a kill or be killed world. Now here's a nice little trick, everyone. It's called lying. Islanders! What's that one? You promised us sanctuary, gave us wrong ports, and half of our team has died trying to get to you. What well, is happening? To, uh, in the middle of freaking nowhere. Uh, to be fair, the delegate, the delegate that was helping you, Apricot, she did give you the right ports, but she was pretty great until she died, and then some people ate her. You led them here. I'm going to stab you. Islanders, I will say that I'm a diplomat. Bad. What once was the Eastern Island faction became a group of merciless cannibals, but little did the world know that there were two original islanders left that were still loyal to the late king Jack the Doorknob, players Aster and Cap. They were the real last islanders. My last Yo, movie. look at this sign. Look at this. Dedicated to Jack, our former leader, Jack the Doorknob. They went in an election against him. This place, it's pretty desolate. We don't have a team. You gotta understand. If you want to be realistic, we only have four people on our team. Make yeah, Itis and Relay wild. are I forgot what they were called. The cannibals. Me yeah. and Cap swam away because we weren't affected, and we just heard news that the cafe is gone. They they do take damage. They do have health. They probably can die. We just haven't. We just. Hi. No, I, I literally have- So, update. I'm probably going to be execu- Hi, guys. How you doing? Um, we're just cooking a little bit. How you guys doing? Doing good? I'm just cooking some food by the fire. How you guys doing? Okay, I'm out of here. Goodbye. Guys, there's like an entire chair down here. The Peace Cafe is actually wonderful. You know what? I'm done. I'm sick of traveling. We're living here now. Sure, it's got oh. yetis, but like, oh, whatever. We, 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 Yo, what do we get if we kill the yeti, bro? There's this one's running away, so I assume it's got low health. I yes, killed it! Yes. Yeah. It dropped so much! Oh, I already knew it was. But it dropped food, it did, it dropped tons of food. Uh, yeah, everyone uh, get inside, I'm tired. I'm, I'm starving to death. Grave the Ghoul was able to scare off the islanders, and even slay a yeti. However, the islanders weren't willing to give up the comforts of the cafe without a fight, and waited for the right moment to strike. See it along in the in the squad. Up, oh, they're killing each other. Oh, Grave's gonna die! I think they're fighting. They're fighting. Oh no, nope. Grave's gonna die. Yeah, they're fighting. They're all gaming up on him because he's a nut. He's nope. Bushy King Grave was able to escape from the Islanders, but he had given the rest of his food to his teammates who needed it more. Scared and alone in the wilderness, Grave the Ghoul eventually succumbed to winter like a true bushy, surrounded by nature. Even though the leader of the cafe had been eliminated by the islanders, Toaster Lurker, King Zedalon, and his knight general escaped underground during the battle. King Zeta was desperately trying to get in touch with Senior Aussie for help, as the remaining cafe members were all starving to death. Bring the Yeti out to the ocean. He's coming with us. Does Yeti need food? I'm at two hearts, two hunger bars. I threw a cookie, but... Nope! <laughs> no, he's got the boat! He took my boat! <laughs> The Yeti on a boat. Wait, I want to get, I want to get the boat. The Yeti. Dude, wait, wait, wait. can you please meet up with us soon? Um, yeah. Ozzy, are you almost here? Three sixty three nine thirty four. With only fifteen survivors remaining, we began the final stage of the experiment, the rescue. The captain of the three ships from the beginning broadcasted to the players and told them that he would pick them up soon. They only had to hold on for a little longer. To captain. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> we gotta make it there. Ozzy, can you please come help us? We would probably just go there. Guys, what you guys I have hunger a heart. Wait, what's the I have course? a half a hunger bar, but you know what? Let's go. <sighs> so, so do you have any more cookies? Are you completely out? <gasps> fish! I have fish, the fish! Get the fish! You really that excited of a fish? Hungry! Kumbaya, this might be the end for me, guys. Kumbaya. I'll take your crown if you fall. This might be the end for me unless um, Ozzy can meet up with us. Even at the end, Zaydalon's knight, General Orion, remained loyal and prioritized the well-being of his king, giving him any and all food he had to ensure his survival. Ozzy, where are you, dude? We desperately need you. Oh, I'm dead. Goodbye, my friends. I'm running. Goodbye. General. Right. It Goodbye. seems to be the end for us. I have half a hour left. You gotta eat one of <gasps> He had pork! What? You drop human meat on death. Jesus! <laughs> Did you guys not know that? Wait, let's cook Jesus it. Let's cook it. Let's cook it. I'm gonna take one of those for, uh... Yeah, feel free to, dude. I'm, I'm not gonna eat it yet. Is I'm gonna wait till I'm about to die. Yes, I'm eating him, dude. We are, on, we are on the verge of losing until he died. Okay, we'll I'm be close. staying Like 300 bucks. We'll be staying here. Dude, we're, like, surviving off, off cannibalism right now. Jesus. I mean, I'm not eating people yet. You Wait, just what? ate part of him. What do you mean? I didn't eat it. I, I'm not committing cannibalism. I'm just heavily thinking about it. God. It's different. No. I mean, no. <gasps> There's a dog. Let's eat it. I just hate that it had to be General that had to sacrifice for us. What's up, guys? I'm here. Well, no, he didn't. Looking good, my man. Do you, okay, you guys can have this. Food. Okay, oh where is Campbell. this boat? We're the we last ones of the group that went that way. <laughs> we actually were doing decent surviving winter. I decided to make the executive decision what would happen if I ate someone's meat. We didn't realize that it was an airborne disease. Uh, and now it's just me and Relay. We've been huddling out here and waiting for that boat to come. Yeah, right here. I found Emerald's corpse in the middle of the ocean, and so oh, I had to pick up his head. Relay, here's the plan. We have a bit of an advantage, you know what that is? We swim good. Oh, to the I don't remember. Okay, I will book it to the boat. Could see if we could negotiate with the other team when the Here, boat arrives relay. to see if we can all spare. Relay. I'll go have a talk with them, <laughs> see that how that good. goes. There's five of each team left. To you, my day. radar is all jammed from the storm. You're gonna have to activate a signal for me to come to you. The evacuation point was marked by a beacon and its location broadcasted to all. However, he could only take six players. The survivors faced one final challenge, as there were 12 remaining. We made a deal with the Nords that since there's only four of us left, and we're the two main islanders left, we're going to be the six. We want to be the six. We should hopefully be fine, because it, it, it's going to be a 6v6. Soon after Snake and Relay arrived, the last four Nords, Toaster Lurker, Senior Aussie, Zaydalon, and lone survivor Akibe, showed up. These six players decided that they would be the winners and that they would kill everyone else that got in their way, including members of their own team. Hello! There's two bushes here. Do we kill them? Yes. Yes. One has dogs. One has dogs. They got the dogs. Kill all dogs the bushes. Are, dogs are dead. Why, are you, uh, why are you hurting the bushes? Islanders, help us. We need to take out the bushes. Why? Okay. What did we do? There's only six of us allowed here. Where's One that? Wait, so... Islanders Aster and Cap were able to make it, but were betrayed by Snake and Relay. I mean, I'm not going to stop you guys, but if you guys want to kill the other Islanders that are not me and Snake, we, we will help you, yeah. in fact. Relay, I invited you, man. Listen, Dude. it's all it's all for one, man. I'm sorry, yeah. but... Take him out, Akabee. He's wrong. Oh, I don't have my... Got him. Oh, thank you. Oh, man, I killed my first. I, I killed a man. Nope. You the man. Murder. Oh, oh, you murder. Murder. Whoa. This is our beacon. There are nine people left. It's just rude, man. I'm sorry, I didn't man, expect to do a fight here. Can I have permission to pull the lever at the end of this really long hallway? I oh, we already did. We already did. Oh. Four of the five last bushies died on their way to the beacon. Player Jupiter Stone was the last bushy alive. No. Oh. Wait, who's the seventh? The person out in the water. All right, kill him. Nah, 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 nah. All right, <laughs> just... Relay, you and me are up. Take out his boat. Wait, what the f***? Nope. Why the f*** nope. are you so fast? We both learned to, to know each other. Yeah. Hell yeah. With Jupiter Stone's death, the Bushies became the first team to not survive winter and were now extinct. The last seven players received some bad news from the captain. His ship's navigation broke and in order to summon him, one of the survivors would have to willingly give their life by entombing themselves inside of the tunnel. If no one decided to flip the switch within five minutes, they would miss their chance at escape and be consumed by the island. 
I ran a peaceful cafe. I contributed my part. So I effectively saved all of the Nords here. Oh. That could be no. Is that a oh. You know what? Oh. That could be go in there. You built the stupid Among Us statue at the top of the mountain. Go. Oh, no, no, no. The Among Us no, statue is no, no, great. Do not don't call that man stupid. No, no. Don't insult him. No, I'm not the calling him stupid. I'm not calling him himself. stupid. I'm calling his stupid little statue on the top of the no, mountain. He, he dumb, don't have to okay? pull that lever, you know. Guys, the Islanders. He already did. He already did. Ekebi, all I have to say is, game. all I have to say is, I, I, if you build another Among Us statue at any point, I will burn it down. Okay. Yeah. What happens to Akabi? I want to watch. What happens to Akabi? Akabi, come to the, come to the, come to the cage. Take this. <laughs> take this. <laughs> the I oh, wish I the best the I, I gave Akabi my diamond sword. Here, Akabi. quick fight. Take another one. <laughs> no, I don't think two will help. Oh, the, Imagine uh, the if we all start I, dying to mobs Bro, now. they have infinite HP. Holy I tried fun. killing okay. these guys before, they have infinite HP. I may or may not have told people to go kill the yetis. This was a great event. I'm sorry. The boat! Get to the boat! Get to the boat! Go! Run! As the survivors race to their freedom, Senior Aussie, still fueled by the death of his friend Robert Ka, began indiscriminately attacking the last survivors, and in an unexpected move, killed his king, Zagalong. Whoa! Oh. Whoa! Aussie! Whoa! Aussie! Aussie did exactly what I said. Got Aussie. Whoa. Oh frick! Aussie, help me yeah. kill Aussie. He's right here. He's just shooting me. Running! He's running! He's running! I Take gotta eat. Out. So he's off the boat. He's, he's the off ladders. the boat. Out of the ladders. I see him! I see him! I see him! He's on the left side. Left side. Left side. Shh. I can't fight back. He's a flame bow. He's up, he's up. He's gonna stay up there. Aussie's superiority in combat struck fear into the hearts of the remaining players. In a last ditch effort, they attempted to reason with him before he killed them all. Aussie? Aussie. We can talk about stop, this. We can all get out of here, Aussie, if you stop. Aussie, we don't want to kill you. We don't want to kill you, Aussie. Here's the thing, Aussie. You're risking no, this, because if, if we win, we have a guaranteed spot in the next event. Yeah, I'll see, we're good. Like, all we of us left people. can get on, can stay on this boat, and we can all be guaranteed we all see each other next event. Or... Okay, we can we, shoot. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Go to yeah. the mainland. Congratulations, oh, guys. There's a... <laughs> From the soft and bright beginnings of spring to the bitter cold end of winter, we wondered what these five final players had in common that helped them survive. But whether it was luck or skill, they persisted due to factors that were outside of their control in the end. The event posed the question, how far will players go to survive? But in the end, we realized that it didn't matter how far they were willing to go. They were never in control in the first place. In our first event, Doom, we tested whether or not 100 players could survive an apocalypse. In our second event, Desperation, we tested the players' limits by making them choose between survival or morality. Now, in our next event, we will see how monarchs rise and fall, and if the peasants are willing to take it. Thanks for watching. If you want to take part in our next experiment, Tithe, please join our Discord using the link below. And if you like this video and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Thank you. That I'm was so such glad. a good event. So oh my god. These people that are here, I'm you know. so glad I streamed it. That's such you a good only, stream. Uh, we had some you sacrifices. That was... Oh yeah, oh, yeah. poor Timmy. Question, so what right, did so the Yetis have, do? Because I, I never saw backstory. the Yetis. So you, got, you, guys are, um, yeah. you guys are guaranteed a slot VIP, you know. Yeah.